One thing you hear quite often about the NFL is that it's a copycat league. While it's become somewhat of a cliche, there is a reason for that, and it has everything to do with how concepts get borrowed from, copied, and reused along the way. But one of the key elements of each team's research into plays is not just to copy what they see on tape, but to understand the science behind each play to make it their own. But as the game and its rules have evolved, so have the schemes themselves. So today we'll be looking at the history of a popular quick game concept commonly known as the Dragon Concept. And we'll take a journey across four decades to see how NFL passing attacks have evolved this West Coast offense concept, its teaching points, and its progressions from its early beginnings as a mirrored play and split back sets to modern day versions that involve up to five receivers in a non-mirrored play design. Herbert opens in an empty set with three receivers to the left and two at the bottom, and then he brings his back in motion. And so Herbert, with the quick game, is going to take a very tight three-step drop. There'll be a drag by number two and a slant by number one. The drag is going to get to a depth of three yards as he gets width to the boundary. And versus free access, the wide receiver is going to take three steps and run a slant at 45 degree angle or flatter depending on the alignment of the corner. On the back side, the concept is spacing where the number one receiver is going to run a hook route at six and the number two receiver is going to sit down over the ball at five yards with the back running a wide. The play is called for three deep zone and that's exactly what the Eagles give Herbert. In fact, it's better than that because the Eagles are playing a rush zone. They're rushing five at the line of scrimmage and so they're vacating one of the zones below, which makes the play even more viable. While he's looking left, he's buying time for his spacing runners to get ready to take the ball. And it's extremely important that they explode off the ball and get to their final positions. Allen should be in the, on the hash mark area with his adjacent receiver at six yards just outside the hash. So there is good spacing to the backside. And then the back will run the wide to create horizontal spacing at the bottom of the screen. This is a progression read horizontally across the field. If the flat had been covered, he would work the slant. If he doesn't like it, he will reset and hitch up to the receiver over the ball or the hook receiver releasing vertically adjacent to him. And then finally finish with the wide. One, two, three, four, five progression read for Justin Herbert, and he takes number one to the flat. So let's go back to 1995 before spacing became into existence. Split right formation with running backs with their hands down in a three-point stance. At the top of the screen, the tight end running the drag, the wide receiver running the slant. At the bottom of the screen, the wide receiver running the slant, and the back running the drag with the blocking back checking through and getting over the ball. The difference between then and now is the quarterback had to pick the best look side. And with the safety dropping down in three deep zone coverage, the quarterback has elected to work the bottom of the screen and either work the back on the flat or the wide receiver on the slant to the short side. Once he starts to one side, his only available flare control would be the back over the ball. And the back here is caught up in the trash and doesn't get to a sit down position over the ball. You can see here that the 49ers are lined up in a two tight end set with two wide receivers on either side of the formation. John Taylor at the bottom and Jerry Rice at the top. And instead of having spacing on one of the sides of the formation, 49ers have it a, what we call a mirrored route where drag and slants are on both sides of the field. So this progression read starts with quarterback Steve Young taking three steps from under center and picking a side, commonly known as best look side. The progression starts with the drag in the flat at the top of the screen because that's where Young is looking and then to the slant versus man-to-man -man coverage. As I said before, the play is designed for three deep coverage. 
But at the end of the day, 3D man-to-man is extremely beatable as well. As you see Jerry Rice taking a starting out as an inside release, then back outside to flip the corner's hips and then bringing it back underneath. The flare control winds up being the back over the ball. So this play back in the day was limited because the quarterback had to pick a side, drag or slant either way. I want to take you to 2002. Spacing now comes into play in the NFL. The Raiders line up two tight ends, two wides, and a back to the top of the screen. Instead of a tight end and a wide receiver, we have two wide receivers, one outside and one in the slot. They motion to empty and run exactly the same play that the Chargers ran with different people in different places. Same drop, same progression, same read, different players in different places. The drag and the slant is run now by two wide receivers. The inside receiver, number two, running the drag, the outside receiver running the slant. And then on the backside, instead of having two wide receivers, we have two tight ends occupying both those spaces, running the sit over the ball and the spacing element. On the backside, you can see the first inside receiver tight end is over the ball on a set to create the spacing, the triangular spacing between the drag, the slant, and the sit. The deeper hook to the outside is number four. And instead of running a wide, as we did in the last video, a sit outside there wide to finish the progression. So as Gannon comes back, he starts in his third step looking to the flat or the slant against this rotated coverage. And Gannon is able to see Rice not take it in the first hole, but take it in the second hole inside the linebacker who's the number two defender. Again, short throw and a highly explosive play for the Raiders on this three-step drop concept. Again, you see the beauty of the West Coast offense. They start in a tight, power looking set, and then they shift. And the final shift will allow for some pre-snap coverage identification, whether it be man or zone. And you can see the safety comes out, which is an indication and the first indication of man-to-man -man coverage. Then the back motions from a one back set to an empty set and takes over a wide receiver type slot position. And Gannon knows exactly where he's going to start at the top of the screen, starting with the drag. And as the linebacker goes to cover the running back, it leaves one-on-one -on -one for the wide receiver, Jerry Rice at the top, to run his slant. Because the backer inside on the hash mark is looking up a crosser, wide receiver number three. That opens up the hole. Gannon knows where he's going. He's just looking off the backer for a split second, and then he's getting to the drag slam portion of it. As the linebacker takes over the crosser, it creates a hole for the slant. Gannon drives the football in there one foot in front of the numbers and turning it in to an explosive play. Moving ahead to 2015, another look at the same play, this time with some motion by the tight end to get to a final two by two position. The Ravens line up with a tight end and a wide receiver to the short side of the field. In this zone coverage, the linebackers that are in double A alignments are taking drops. But what I really wanna focus on right here is not the motion of the tight end, just on Flacco's helmet and where his eyes will be. At the snap of the football, Flacco looks left first because he's always starting with the drag and then to the slant. If he doesn't like him early as he finishes the drop, he has time to reset for both the sit runner to get into the hash mark area and wall the linebacker, which creates the hole for the hook runner. And then the back gets out late for flare control. But you can see what Flacco did. He started with the drag as one, the slant is two, back to over the ball three, and then to Max Williams sitting on the hash mark, running the deeper hook route. So this history lesson in review, five-man progression, horizontal progression across the field in the dragon concept. 